All right, so how do we do a limiting reactant problem? Okay, limiting reactant is basically you've got several ingredients in the cupboard and you're trying to figure out how many cookies you can make, as the analogy is, or in the analogy from the podcast, how many pikes can you make, right? So but let's do a chemical example. So let's say I've got FeCl3. I'll do a double replacement reaction. And FeCl3 reacts with... Um, Silver nitrate. So, good practice. We need to figure out what the products are. So, what do we need to do? We need to play the charge game, right? So, let's make our little charge box here. We'll do the math part in a little bit, but it's always good to just practice. So, what's the? What am I going to break down here? Fe, Cl, Ag, and NO3, right? Now, what are the charges on everybody? What's Fe's charge? He's a transition metal and you can't find it, can you? Hmm, so what do you do? Well, we know CL's charge. What's CL's charge? Uh, uh, negative one. Negative one. So what does FE's charge have to be? Negative positive one. Incorrect. Oh, okay. It's FE CL3 here. <laughs> three. He's going to be a three. Can you see why? Silver is going to be, nitrate is minus one. Silver is going to be plus one. So when they get together on the other side of the equation, the other arrow, what are we going to make? The AG gets together with who? No, because they have the same charge. CL. Do the charges cancel? Yeah. Of course they do. And then what's the other chemical? So you have to put three nitrates, don't you? Now we have to balance this equation because you can't do a stoichiometry problem, a stoichiometry problem without balancing the equation. So how do I do that? Well, Somebody come balance this equation. Oh man. Okay. Well, um, so come on, someone step up. I, Grab a pen. Oh man. Let's see. I'm going to do it wrong. Right. Oh, there's three. You got a chlorine and a nitrate problem. But there's three CLs on the left side and one CL. That is correct. So come up here and fix it. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. You can do it. Um, whoa. Okay, what did I do? That's all right. Just do it again. I don't know what's going on. So it's real it's real okay, Marina. <laughs> oh man. You get to touch it. Okay, good. All right, uh, that's not the whole answer, though. What does that mean? <laughs> well, finish, finish, girl. What did you just do? You made three AGs. Yeah. So pick up the pen again. All right. Now fix it. What do you need to put another number? There you go. That gives you three and O3s. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, what does it do to the FEs? Makes it have three. Makes it have one. Okay. So that's it. That's correct. So you, you're panicking, but this is a one, and this is a one. All right, now let's make up some numbers. Let's say that you've got uh, 18 grams of FeCl3 and 16 grams of silver nitrate. And the question is, how many grams of silver chloride do you have? So that would be written out in words, right? They'll say you've got this reaction. Sometimes I'll give you the reaction like this. Sometimes I'll give it to you and have it balanced. Sometimes I won't balance it. Sometimes I'll have the written in words. So you just kind of apply unit six stuff to do this, right? So now I need to do two stoichiometric problems. And you convert grams of this to grams of AgCl. Take grams of this and convert to grams of AgCl. And the lowest answer will win. You understand what I mean by it will win? The winner is the one with the lowest answer. Why is that? Well, if you've got um, 10 pounds of sugar, in your cupboard, and I figure out how many cookies can I make with 10 pounds of sugar? Let's say 20 dozen, I don't know, a lot, right? But if I've got uh, only four cups of flour, and I figure I can only make one dozen cookies with four cups of flour, I can only make one dozen cookies. I've got lots of extra sugar. 
I got lots of extra sugar in my house, but not enough flour to make all the cookies. So which of these is the sugar and which is the flour, so to speak? Which one do I have extra and which do I have not enough of? So now I just do the stoichiometry, use the whole mole map deal, right? So I got FeCl3, I'll say 18 grams of FeCl3. It's a mole to mole problem. Now if you pull out your mole map, so I'm not going to do that, but I'm just gonna, you can do this. You're first going to go from grams to moles, and then moles to moles, and then moles to grams. So I'll say grams of FeCl3. Notice I'm not having any naked numbers. Where do I find this value right here? How do I figure it out? <coughs> what do I do? Something. Something. No, it's you add something. All right, FeCl3. I have to look on my periodic table. So Fe has a mass of 56, right? Plus 35.5 is chlorine times 3. This is the molar mass of FeCl3. So it's 162.5. Good? I've just got moles of FeCl3. I don't want moles of FeCl3. I want moles of AgCl, right? <laughs> so what do I do now? I'm now going to use the mole to mole ratio. It's one and a three here, right? So I'll say one mole of FeCl3 is equal to three moles of AgCl. That's the mole to mole ratio, right? And then my last step is I want to convert to grams of AgCl. One mole of AgCl is so many grams of AgCl. Again, where do I find this number? You multiply the... I get my calculator out, right? Yep. And I find the weight of silver on the turkey table, 107.8 plus 35 and a half is chlorine. And I get 143.3. Make sense? Now I'm going to type in my numbers. I've got 18 divided by 162.5 times 3 times 143.3 equals 47.6 grams of AgCl. This is just a stoichiometry problem, right? I have to just do two of them. It's not terribly difficult to do two of them, right? So I now need to move my calculator away. And what have I got? I've got, I want to convert now the grams of the silver nitrate to the grams of the silver, of the, yeah. So I'm going to say 16 grams of AgNO3 over 1. And I'll say grams of AgNO3 to one mole of AgNO3. Then I'm going to say, and I'll, call, I'll go figure this number out after the fact. We could do it. But. Now, what's the mole ratio here? For AgNO3, I have three and a three. So this is three moles of AgCl to three moles of AgNO3. Right? And then the same ratio, I'm converting to AgCl, so I'll take 143.3 grams of AgCl in one mole of AgCl. So one of these is going to give us the smaller number of cookies, and that's the one that wins. So what have I got? 16. So I've got uh, 16 divided by, oh, I never did, hold on. I've got to figure out what this number is. Silver was 100 and... 7.8, I think, was it? 9. 107.9 plus 14 for nitrogen plus 16 times 3 for the three oxygens. You get 169.9. So this number is 169.9. Is that 16 yet? So now I'm going to take 16 divided by 169.9 
times 143.3. I could have said times 3 divided by 3, but the 3's got to cancel, don't they? And I get 13.49. survey says 13.49 wins, doesn't it? So I can only make 13 cookies instead of 47 cookies. Actually, if you will. That's right. So um, now let's make a note here. Oftentimes we're going to ask a question, and that question is going to be, what is the limiting reactant? The limiting reactant is the one that you run out of first. What are you going to run out of first in this experiment? Um, I don't know. Megan's head is in the way. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, this. A, G, Don't think it, a lot of students will get confused. They'll say A, G, C, L. A, G, C, L is how many cookies you can make. All right. So you can only make 13 cookies, but the thing, the ingredient you run out of first is this silver nitrate. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is considered the limiting reactant. This is the excess reactant. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Now there's always another question we always ask. How much, how many cups of flour do you have left over? Or sugar, whatever you had to write a bunch of. So we still have, we have 18 of these, but we didn't use all of them. We only used some of them, right? How much did we use? And then we know how much we used, so I used 15, I had three left over. But how do I figure out how much I used? Well, guess what? You have to do one more stoichiometric line. You have to convert this to this using the same process. It's a tedious problem. Limiting reaction problems are tedious. Yes, sorry. It is. So I'm going to convert the 16 grams of AgNO3. I have to do this again. I need to convert it to grams of FeCl3. But the first reaction is easy because I've already done that. 169.9 grams AgNO3 to one mole of AgNO3. Right? That's easy. It's the same as that last one. It could be the other one. Then I'm going to do the mole ratio, and it's a 1 here and a 3 here. So I'll say 1 mole of FeCl3 to 3 moles of AgNO3. And I'm going to go to grams of this because this is in grams. So what is the molar mass? We did that here, right? 162.5 grams of FeCl3 to 1 mole of FeCl3. Now I do the math. So what was that number? 16. So 16 divided by 169.9 divided by 3 times 162. Point, is it 5? Close enough. All right. 5.10. And what does that number mean? That means that if I had 16 grams of silver nitrate, 16 cups of flour, I would need 5.1 grams of FeCl3, 5 cups of sugar. How many cups of sugar did I start with, if you will? 18. So the no amount remaining, we'll put over here, will be 18 minus 5.1, which is whatever it is. 18 minus 5.1 gives you 12. You're right. Equals 12.9 grams of FeCl3 left over. That's how you do a land flow. Notice there are three stoichiometric lines. One, two, three. Then you, and they have this subtraction thing at the end. These are tedious and long. You have to be pretty good at doing stoichiometry, don't you? You do these problems. Now, a note here. I had a problem that was grams and grams and grams. If this is grams and liters and grams, you still do the same thing. You have to convert to whatever unit it's in or that they're asking about. It. So watch that. Um, when would you ever use this? Just curious, like, uh, as you became a chemistry teacher. Well, not just chemistry teachers, but uh, you use this. All right, how many cups of flour, how many cookies can you make? I know, but you don't uh, use You could use this. It's easier if you just look at Aspiration might be It's easier if you just um, make cookies about this? while you run out of something. Here's an analogy. Yeah. Uh, not an analogy. Um, people weigh different amounts, don't they? Yeah. So if you go into the hospital someday, you're going to be given drugs occasionally for uh, conditions, right? Okay? Guess what they have to do when they're trying to figure out what your dosages are? This. 
Yeah, but see, I'm not. My wife is a nurse. Yeah. She has to give people medicine to her yeah. the hospital when they're giving medicine. The doctor says, you know, she goes, she looks in a book, and the book says, especially for children, because, uh, you know, you can have a 20 pound child or an 80 pound child. Right. Obviously, an 80 pound child needs more of the same medicine than a 20 pound child. If you get too much drugs, you kill the kid, right? And so what do they have to do? They have to use stoichiometry. So they say that they know the dosage per kilogram of child is whatever, such and such milligrams. Then they have to calculate how, what the dosage is they're going to give to the little baby versus the teenager. Obviously, totally different body type. Yeah, but so see, nurses use this we need to all do like the Asians. time. <laughs> or we just have classes for what we want to become, not stuff like this. You never know what you're going to become. So I know what I want to become. Yeah. And I'm not going to need this. Okay, well, all right.